abilities and talents, um, interests. Once I had it right, it was nine days before I attracted the woman who I was married to for the next 10 years. Welcome back, Russell. It's really good to have you on our channel again. And uh, I've been really looking forward with bated breath to this topic. It's a hot topic and how to attract your ideal partner. Wow. Yes. Uh, no more. So tell us about your passion and what you got for us. Well, I guess this is my passion because it was also my biggest struggle. Um, I... I don't know if you're aware of this. I've been married three times with a child to each marriage. And if you want to have challenge in relationships and, and want to get really accelerated learning on relationships, that's one way to go about it. Not the easiest way to go about it, but that's certainly an effective way to get that really uh, accelerated learning curve. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I don't recommend it for everyone, but there you go. There. So, look, I have three wonderful children out of it and, and a lot of experience. Um, and so, you know, about, so the, the short story is I recognised that I was repeating patterns, but I couldn't not repeat them. It was like I was programmed, like I was on a, a set of train tracks headed for relationship drama. Mm. And I'd, I'd spent what, nearly 10 years working with three different psychologists trying to get this sorted. So I understood the patterns, but it was like I just couldn't help it. I was running down the same track. And then uh, in the late 90s, round about the time we met, actually, um, I, I started working with a, a genius of an NLP practitioner, John Brenton, who was really cracking some eggs. And, and I began to realise where the patterns were set up and more importantly, to have some tools that could actually resolve those patterns. And so in, uh, it would have been early 2000, I'd, I'd had probably something like 20 sessions resolving the, the childhood and later patterns that had set me up for attracting drama and challenges in relationships. Um, and, when I say resolve that, I want to be clear. No one actually finishes resolving everything, but I'd, I'd resolve the biggest and hairiest, if you like, um, of, the, of the issues and patterns that have been causing me problems. And then I set the intention to attract my ideal partner. Now, my, my coach at the time said, I want you to be really, really specific. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, I had one woman that came to me and she was very specific, specific about everything, except she'd forgotten to write heterosexual. And so she met this guy that was really gorgeous, warm and sensitive and everything right. And then two years into their marriage, he said, sorry, I can't do this. I thought I could. I, I wanted to give it a go, but I'm gay and I can't be with you. <laughs> so he, he told me this. The man or the woman? The, the man. So the man was gay oh. and, and he, he had decided for whatever reason that, that, um, that maybe he wasn't really gay and he wanted to try having a, a heterosexual relationship. And it seemed so good. Uh, but after two years, he realised he had no attraction for women. Wow, what a dilemma for the lady. The poor girl wouldn't know which way to turn. Absolutely. So she, she'd gone, now she'd done a lot of good work on herself. She'd gone from attracting guys that were, that were really damaged and violent and, you know, um, into drugs or alcohol and stuff like that to attracting this, this beautiful, warm, sensitive, loving guy. But he was really only able to give her that brotherly love. Yeah. And, you know, because of whatever, whatever he had going on, um yeah he wasn't able to continue that that relationship which she said had been the best relationship she'd been in so so i guess there's a number of parts to attracting your ideal partner 
if we sum it up really simply, first is to resolve the emotions and limiting beliefs, the patterns that set us up for attracting what wasn't ideal. Yeah, I guess if you don't learn your lesson, they're continually repeated. So if you can't identify your pattern, you're, you're, you're bound by uh, meta programs and habitual behavior to keep attracting, keep behaving, keep facilitating that sort of behavior in your relationships and setting that environment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So when people see me for relationship issues um, or to attract their ideal partner, I ask them how they feel about their current situation. And they might say they feel lonely or they're angry or they're frustrated or sad or hurt, guilty, shameful, whatever that pattern is, whatever that emotional is. And I ask them about what their beliefs are about themselves and they'll often say I'm not good enough or I'm unlovable or or nobody would want someone like me there's some kind of belief like that going on and then I ask them when was the first time they felt that and sometimes it it, it takes a bit of questioning sometimes it takes some hypnotic processes to go back but nine times out of ten it goes back to early feelings of of rejection or some challenges with their relationship, usually with their parents or siblings. And in most cases, it goes back to before the age of seven. Mm -hmm. So we're unconsciously running those patterns. For example, I I met a woman a while ago, um, gorgeous, attractive woman, great energy, really vibrant. Um, And, and she said, well, she said she'd had, she'd had five long-term relationships, in, including two marriages, to men who were abusive and alcoholic. Ouch. So what was my first question? Well, which of your par- parents was abusive or alcoholic? And, and sure, in this case, it was dad. Could, could have been mum too, but in this case, it was her dad. Mm-hmm. And actually, I should specify that there are some people that say men will tend to marry their mother and women will tend to marry their father. That is not literally, but someone with with those attributes or characteristics. I would suggest more that we marry someone who will bring up familiar patterns that we've yet to resolve. Especially if we live into the world that way. In other words, everything in your life is a response to what you are. And that's how the messages of life happen. So if you're living into a life of facilitated behaviour, enabling, uh, you know, like being submissive, all those sort of things, you are going to attract the people that recognise those patterns that they live into and need to fulfil their existence. So bang, the attraction isn't what we think. We think it's all these uh, wonderful goodies that are inside us that attract people. No, it's the harmonisation for us to live out our patterns. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you're right that it's a dovetail. It's not just, you know, me that's attracting people that bring up my dramas, but equally, I was bringing up their dramas or, or issues, whatever they were. Mm. Um, and, and of course, you know, you, you hear if you speak to two people from a couple that just separated, they'll, they'll often, I mean, some people these days are separating in a, in a state of conscious awareness, but the majority of people, they'll, if you listen to each of them, they'll paint this picture of the other person being some kind of monster when, when really they're just living that, that matched pattern of, of drama. Well, so something powerful I've thrown in the mix there. I was counselling a particular lady and me at the time they had a toxic relationship. I think they were together for 15 years. In that relationship, it was so toxic I won't go into the detail, but it was bad for them. Now, my assessment of them both were there were two people that were really not only bad for each other, but they had issues. The interesting thing is when they finally came apart and couldn't do it anymore and got with new partners, their life expressions changed completely. The woman, for instance, has been in a relationship seven years since in the most happiest, normal, balanced, fulfilled relationship. So when you put two people together, sometimes it's like getting some chemicals that are going to eat through the table 
And then when you put the other <laughs> people together, it's like the chemicals are going to create wonderful perfume. So it can yes. be mismatching of patterns or whatever it is, you know, that of course people change, people grow, people learn sometimes. But it, yeah. it's such a complex thing. And, and um, I'm really keen to hear from you uh, what you've got that we may reduce the possibility of that fractionation, that trouble, that 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 consistent, oh, here we go again. And then you know yeah. you are partially responsible for that happening and allowing it. Or, or maybe totally. Because it, here, here's the thing. There's, there's a lot of talk now about don't get into, you know, victim blaming. Mm -hmm. And blaming of anyone, whether it's the victim or the perpetrator, from a self-development perspective, doesn't have any purpose. No. Because as soon as I blame someone else, oh, it's her fault. She did this, she did that, you know, uh, poor me. As soon as we get into that state, we're helpless. Mm. When, we can, when we can take responsibility for what we've attracted and what we've created, mm -hmm. um, then we move into a place of power. Now, I, I, I want to be clear there. This is about empowering people. This, this isn't about victim bashing. It's, a, it's about saying, well, you know, this has happened more than once. There's a common denominator. And it's me. <laughs> yeah, and it's me. Yeah, so when my first marriage didn't work out, it's her. She did all these bad things. When the, when the second one didn't work out, I'm going, hmm, <laughs> you know, this isn't the first time. Uh, maybe i got to look at the common denominator. And, and that's what led me to getting some real good quality coaching. And it's probably more therapy than coaching that you need at that stage. Mm. Because coaching is really good for getting strategies but you really need something more therapeutic to resolve limiting beliefs, to align your values um, and to resolve those limiting emotional patterns. I, I, I guess for me, I guess a really good reflective, honest mirror where people who know you well, that have the skills look into you, you're invited them, they speak into your life and they say, frankly, this was your motive. This was your behaviour. And until you own that motive or behaviour, it's going to repeat because you think no one can see it, including yourself. But when it's brought right into the forefront of your consciousness, point blank, by someone who loves you and you trust, um, you know, I've got a friend who's a professional counsellor. I, I counselled him for a long time and now it's his turn to counsel me and he, he's pulled <laughs> me up lately and just give me some really cold, hard truths. And I go, oh, blah, blah. He said, well, you can deny it if you want. <laughs> yeah. and I've just had to own what he said and I've come back in a later phone call because I couldn't own it in the moment I said you were right I see it but it's made a profound difference in me because now I can see a whole spectrum of some of my pattern that I don't have to repeat and look I think seeing it getting the conscious awareness is a great step and at the same time Awareness is a, is a small part of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I also see people for things like quit smoking and lose weight. And, and they're all aware of the problem, you know. So I stick these cigarettes in my mouth and if I keep doing it, it's going to have dramatic effects on my health. You can show them all the logic, but the emotional drivers and the limiting beliefs get them to keep smoking. Mm. Or, or someone, someone who's carrying an extra 5, 10, 20, 30, 80 kilos, you know, they they know that that if they didn't put that uh, those chocolate bars or the ice cream or the or the croissants or whatever whatever it is they're eating the the, the chips and the pizzas if they didn't put that stuff in the mouth they'd lose weight they they can be aware of that but it takes shifting the emotional drivers and the limiting beliefs to actually make change yeah so so for me after after. 10 years of conventional counseling mm -hmm. that was pretty much either every week or every fortnight for the best part of 10 years. I knew what was going on, but I went straight into the same kind of drama. Mm. Well, it's, it, it's interesting. Um, I recently had a relationship for 15 months and I could not fault it 
to a T or the lady. She was a beautiful person. But I realized I'd attracted somebody into my life that wasn't going to stimulate the most important part of my life, which is emotional, mental, psychological, and spiritual. We weren't just going to really connect on that level. So I ended it. And looking back, she was salt of the earth. Like, no complaint. But we're, 15 months we spent together. But what, what has happened since then is I've recognised in a small way and being patient, my next relationship, I'm going to find someone that I feel those things with. And maybe there's some trade-offs in some other areas, but I, I, I didn't understand what my highest values in a relationship were. And I, I, I guess you need to know what your own expectations are before you put any on anyone else. Now, I wasn't going to try and change her or correct her. She didn't need any criticisms or adjustments from me. That would be totally cruel, unfair and unfair yeah. and unloving. So I just said, we're going in different directions. You've done nothing wrong. And she said, but, you know, you were so kind. I said, and I love being kind. And it was all nice. And I said, you've done nothing wrong. You're a beautiful person. But I just realised there was no future of the intimacy and everybody puts intimacy down to sexuality it's not it's a spiritual and yeah. mental connection and it includes sexuality but really for me i would rather have something real and right or not at all so um absolutely not that i'm fussy i'm not fussy but what i am specific is I do not want to do crime and time. I do not want to do convenience. I do not want to do placation or just lonely, let's fill that void. I want to do right relationships. So, yeah, I, I'm really keen to hear what some of the key points, what would be three or four key points to start down this road to attract the ideal relationship? Well, okay, so we talked about one is be ready and and that means thoroughly resolving the causes of the emotional patterns that set you up for what you've attracted or created today. How do you know what um, they are? Well, sometimes the patterns make it obvious. For example, the woman I talked about that had had five abusive alcoholic partners, um, and it's interesting, I've had a number of, a number of clients with very similar patterns, but this one was a classic because I, I asked her, have you ever been with a partner that wasn't alcoholic? And she said, yeah, the last guy I went out with, I decided I wasn't going to get with anyone who drinks ever again. So she found a guy who was a teetotaler, nice, warm, sensitive guy. They had so much in common. Everything went great. And then one day after they'd been together for, I think it was probably nine months or a bit longer, she came home early from work one day, caught him shooting up drugs. And she said, you can't do that. And he flew into a violent rage, exactly the same as her alcoholic ex-partners had. Yeah. So, so consciously, she was, she was avoiding that pattern of alcoholism. But unconsciously, she was destined to attract what was familiar because she hadn't done the deeper work to resolve that. Got it. So, so number one is, is be is get yourself ready and resolve the deeper stuff. How do you do that? Well, my favorite tools for doing that would be um, prior, to, prior to coming up with or being introduced to EFT, timeline therapy was probably the process that had done the most for me. And any of you that are into NLP, you know, timeline therapy is, is probably arguably the king of the NLP tools. Mm -hmm. um, that can be effective. Sometimes some of those NLP reframing tools can be effective too, um, although often they don't go deep enough. Skillfully applied EFT is great and has the advantage that you can self-apply that once you have enough skill to apply it thoroughly and properly. Um, but probably my favorite of all is alpha repatterning, which actually combines the, the best of timeline therapy and NLP with EFT. Mm -hmm. And so essentially with alpha repatterning we ask the person what the goal is and let's say i want to be in a loving relationship and they'll say well if you're in that loving relationship how will you feel now some say i'll feel loved or i'll feel valued or whatever it is 
And then we ask this question, if you haven't got that loved or valued or whatever those um, end values are, what have you got now? Ah, I've got, I've got emptiness or I've got loneliness or I've got, I've got fear or I've got stress or I've got anxiety or I've got frustration or anger, whatever it is. And then with alpha repatterning, we ask the unconscious mind, what's the root cause of that loneliness or whatever the emotion is, which when disconnected will cause this problem to disappear forever. And then, of course, our unconscious mind then takes us back to the core issue wherever it is. Oh, my God. And, and sometimes that's a real surprise. Um, often it'll go back even to things in the womb or at birth or when we're one or two or three years old. Yeah. Um, you, you just really struck a chord in me because um, I work with a lot of people with anxiety and depression to help them through that and beyond that. And I know that in a lot of cases when they're feeling anxious or, or depressed, they need congruency to maintain that pattern so they sabotage their relationships or their opportunities or they, they, they exacerbate their loneliness or their separativeness because they are anxious and depressed. And until those uh, things are resolved, even if they do get a relationship, sabotage is lurking around the corner because of those patterns. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, I, I watched my, my father do that. You know, his, um, his first wife, who he idealised, um, died of cancer at a fairly young age. Um, my mum left him uh, after they'd been married about 20 years mm -hmm. or 17 years or something like that. And, and from that time on, he became so protective of himself that, you know, he, he was an attractive, witty man, a great dancer, very active and fit and healthy. Um, and he would often be dating women that were 10, 20 years younger than him, but he, he, would, he would get so fussy that even though they loved and adored him, he would say, oh, this one's not quite right. You know, I don't, she's got a son who's a bit of a problem. I said, yeah, but his, his son's 25 and he's moved out. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm not going there. And see, so he was just protecting himself yep. from that recurrent pain. Uh, and so... So, yeah, when, when we have these patterns, we'll tend to repeat them because they're familiar. Mm -hmm. So once we've cleared that past stuff, it's important then to find out what our values are in relationships. What's important to us? What are we looking for in a partner? What are we looking for mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually? Um, for some people, career is important. For some people, education is important. Finance. Financial position is also important too. Unless you're happy to be a sugar daddy or sugar mummy, um, you know, there's, um, and these days there's probably as many sugar mummies as sugar daddies because, oh, yeah, you know, daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no sugar. <laughs> you know, if you, if you have one partner who's, who's in a good position financially, that's because of the way they value money. Mm -hmm. And if they attract someone who has no money, then when they come together, that person who doesn't value money will burn their money up till there's none left. Wow. Well, not, not every time, but that's, that's a really common pattern. Yeah. I'm, I'm so, sure. yeah, and I think for some people, education is really important. For me, um, a great level of communication is important. Yeah. So, so like you, I'm guessing... Um, I've in the past had some relationships with people that are beautiful, loving. We have everything's easy being together, but maybe because of um, language difficulties or or just education differences, whatever, um, their level of communication hasn't matched where I'm at. Or sometimes it's just because some people or some cultures find it difficult to express emotions. And so... And so even though that relationship's easy and, and meets a lot of needs, it doesn't meet that need for... Yeah, I get it. So, so that's a really important one. I know for my mother, when she was repartnering, it was really important for her to find someone who had an education. 
Mum had no education growing up and then at 35 went back and blitzed away through VCE and uni. Um, and so for her, education gave her freedom and expression. And so it was important for someone to have a match on, on that level. Mm. So I think the key is being really specific. And I remember when I went back to my coach and I'd written five pages of detailed description of my ideal partner. So what I wanted mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, hobbies and talents, um, interests. And it, it, of all the things that I've written, there were only two things. That, so when I did attract my ideal partner, and it was only, uh, it was only a few weeks after I'd set this intention. I'm thinking that actually it was about nine days after I'd clearly set that intention. Um, and I, I did spend a while rewriting that list to fine tune it. But once, once I had it right, it was nine days before I attracted the woman who I was married to for the next 10 years. Mm. And, um, and in the process, I'd lost that list. But when I moved in with her, uh, I don't know, nine months or a year later, I found that list and I'm looking through and going tick, 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 tick but of the couple of hundred things I had written in that five pages. There were only two things that we weren't an ideal match of the, on, on. And one of those um, was I wanted someone who was computer literate <laughs> because at the time I wanted, so I wanted someone I could, hand bore my admin stuff to. Well, yeah. I realized later that, that a better idea is to um, either me upskilling that or hire a PA who has those. It, 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 it's funny, I uh, am attracted to women who have just a smattering of OCD. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I like that orderly stuff going on around me. I don't like living in a mess or being with a mess. So, you know, I, I I, I just, I guess for me, three green lights. I have to be turned on up here before the rest of the body kicks in. I really have yeah. to have uh, an emotional, mental, spiritual, intellectual connection of, yeah, wow. Because, you know, it's not where you go. Because I've traveled the world with women. I've traveled the world. It's who yeah. you, it's who you're with. Now, absolutely. You go to some of the, the most romantic or, fantastic stuff like in Rome and Spain and Paris and all these places, right? If you're with the right person, oh my gosh, it's a shared experience. But if you're with the wrong person, it's worse than going there on your own. Because Absolutely. you can't really be there with someone and be with them. It, it, it's about a beingness and a fulfillment of a spiritual journey. I, I'm passionate about raising consciousness in myself and awareness in myself and others. So it's about raising consciousness and awareness holistically. So if there's purpose in a relationship that people are loving, growing, caring, discovering and expanding their bandwidth, their maturity, their yes. choices, then I'll crawl over broken glass. But if I'm sitting yeah. there watching a netball match on TV, I, I, I'm going to be looking for a 2B pencil to stick. In my eye. <laughs> you know, it's something that's stimulating and and the other thing too for me is building you know like if if someone says well you know you're a mature age person i'm a mature age person i just really want to uh, retire over there and you know so what are you going to do with yourself oh, i'll probably go shopping and you know check out a few shopping centers i'm going to run a mile you know because well, absolutely I, I, i'm I'm at an age and stage where I feel like I'm young and I want to do and build stuff and I'm hopeful. Yes, I've gone out with women younger than me and that's worked on that level. The only difference is yeah. they want a better looking man or whatever the case may be. It doesn't <laughs> matter. But at least the times we spent together were vibrant, enriching, and I take those memories forward in my life. So, yes. Yeah, um, it's really incredible that um, someone like yourself with all your wide bandwidth of skills, because um, awareness may not be curative, but it is partially curative. And I guess with all that you've got going when the people are seeking uh, that ideal uh, 
partner or relationship, I, I would highly recommend them to seek you out and have the conversation because there's so many things outside our normal awareness, outside our awareness, Absolutely. that someone like yourself could bring to light. Even in this interview, which I've been looking forward to, you've brought at least a half a dozen things. I'll be taking notes when we're finished and, and, and going back over this to see what I'm missing and what I could do because it's very easy for me to meet people and, and, and maybe attract them and go out with them. But it's hard for me to find that ideal fulfillment too, because I don't know yet what stops that from happening. I don't. Yeah. But at the same token, I'm excited to find out and I, I enjoy trying. <laughs> well, look, the, the whole journey is, is fascinating, you know, yeah. and and I'm, look, I'm thankful for my experience over a few years of dating before I met my current partner, mm -hmm. because that then makes it easier coaching people through that part of it. So, you know, so once you've cleared the, the bulk of the issues from the past and then got clear on who you want to attract, these days, the most efficient way of, of finding your ideal partner is with online dating. Oh. But that scares the heck out of most people. Me too. I, 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 I must confess I'm not a, um, I, I don't know what it is, uh, Phil the Fish, um, RSVP, <laughs> you know, there's hundreds of them. I, I, I don't go there. It's just I know that life has been kind to me and I have managed to attract nice people, friends, uh, associates, business partners, uh, ladies in my life at certain times. So I'm trusting that process rather than saying, put yourself out there, get online. I don't need to do that. I mean, sometimes I've met people in the most obscurest ways. I've been down a bush track in the middle of nowhere in a strange country and there is someone sitting on a rock having a glass of, you know, a bottle of water and something's happened. You know what I mean? A, a friendship, yes. a relationship, whatever. So I don't have any um, concerns about attracting somebody. I do have concerns in getting involved with people for experiences I hope I'd sorted out by now and don't need again. So, yeah, so the key with that is doing some thorough work on resolving the, the limiting emotions, beliefs and decisions yeah. that came from those challenging relationships yeah. and, from, and from how the last relationship broke up and so on. Um, the, the law of attraction is an interesting one. When we're, when we're really in that right loving state, it's quite likely to meet your ideal partner um, queuing in the checkout at, at, uh, at the supermarket That's it. or, That's the or filling, you, filling your car at the petrol station or something like that. Um, for those of us that are looking for something deeper, we're unlikely to meet our ideal partner going down to a pub or nightclub. Now, it's not impossible, but... It's unlikely, you know, you, you're looking for, for gold in a coal mine. Um, <laughs> um, but, but there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of benefit to the, to the online dating, provided you follow a few criteria, and that is have a, have a profile that's really honest, yeah. that, that shows as much as you can who you really are and what your interests are. Um, and the advantage, I guess, that, it, that it, uh, the online dating has is you can filter through a lot, um, a lot of maybes and no's without having to invest the time that you do through meeting organically. Mm. And particularly these days with social distancing, it's, it's made it even more challenging to really get close and connect with everyone who's wearing a mask and, and scared to get closer than two metres uh, and so on. Um, but th the other thing with that is when people are on the dating site is to is to observe what you're attracting and to be aware of the red flags. Pardon me for being a little bit rude, but I'm looking for a meme that I saved today that fits what you said. And it, it's so strong that... I posted this about eight years ago and um, I found it today by accident because it remember eight years and I thought, oh, I've got to copy that meme again, which I did. It says a true relationship is when you can tell each other anything and everything, no secrets, no lies. 
Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. You're transparent. I try that. I, I'm very vulnerable in that way with all my relationships, male, female, business, right? I, I, I don't play a game. And what I find is I trust people emphatically, but in a lot of cases, it's all down from there. But, you know, we're, we're a, uh, a scared species now, you know, with everything that goes on. So people are guarded and, and they're not transparent. They're not honest. They do have secrets. They do have lies. And therefore, where, where there's secrets and lies, there can't, in my opinion, be right relationships. So I've become honest, transparent and truthful, and it hurts. But I, I feel, is, is that a shield I've put up to defend myself or is it a filter just to get rid of the flotsam and jetsam? Well, it, it can easily be a bit of both. Mm. Um, that, that is a beautiful question. Um, so when, when we're getting to meet people, we, we tend to put on our best face first mm. up. And at the same time, it's important to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, but here's the thing. If, if we get in a first date and we spew up all the worst thing about ourselves, well, you know, we, we're going to be on Tinder when we're 99, wondering what's going on. <laughs> I will not be on Tinder at 99, trust me. Maybe 105, <laughs> but not 99. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been on Tinder and I don't desire to go there, but that's funny. That's a little No, and, and I, I'm, I'm using that as an example, obviously, no, and that works for some people. I've got clients that have been, you know, happily married for the last five or six years who met their partners on Tinder. Um, you know, and, uh, but it, it can happen anywhere. But here's one of the keys. Um, I'll give you an example. I was working with a woman who said she'd been married to a narcissist for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And now a lot of people throw that word around really lightly. You know, anyone who doesn't agree with them is a narcissist. So I said, how do you know he's a narcissist? And, and man, the description um, she gave me, I'm going, okay. <laughs> you know, um, that's, that's pretty narcissistic behavior. Um, so my first question was, which of your parents was a narcissist? And in her case, it was her mother. Um, and so I knew we had to do some work on that. And then, then I said, when you first met this guy, what were the red flags you ignored? And she said, what do you mean? There weren't any. I said, well, for example, there's, there's a couple of my clients that have had a pattern of attracting narcissists. And um, narcissists will usually do a test early on to see how manipulable you are to see how much of a codependent pleaser you are because a narcissist will only match with someone who's a codependent pleaser. How interesting is that? So, so she said, what do you mean? I said, well, um, they'll either um, change the, the meeting time or date last minute and see if you are easy to comply or they'll, say, turn up for a dinner and not bring their wallet and get you to pay for it and not pay you back. And, and she's gone, ah, oh, he did both of those. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's some interesting things to look out for. And, um, you know... Just, just guys, for people who are watching, I hope you're taking notes because there's some really big clues in here for what's going on, for the pain that's come into your life because uh, I've looked back, I'm 68, and I've looked back into 100 interactions and I'm seeing little, you know, if you've got a map and you can put a little pin on the wall, it happened <laughs> there, and there, this happened there, you know. Wow. So th this is priceless stuff. I'm just wondering... Um, what we can do with this particular uh, video and topic, we can continue and maybe chop it up and put it into three yeah. parts because I don't want to stop you. You're on a roll, but I don't want it to go on too long either because people don't like long videos, but this, this is profound stuff. Yeah. Well, look, let's, let's wrap it up here and then we can later on, we can do some more specifics on, on um, creating your ideal list and on, on the dating process that are really 
really help people with that. Cool. We'll you know, call so this I, one part one and we'll wrap yep. and we'll do a part two or maybe a part three. Perfect. Yep, right. that sounds great. Okay, I'd like to wrap it up here and, and just thank you, Russell Cunningham from Self Development. Uh, is, is, is it called Self Development Australia or Self Development? It's, it's Australian Institute of Self Development and the website is selfdevelopment.com.au. Russell and I go back oh, nearly 30 years, I think, something like that. Yeah. And uh, I found Russell to be uh, someone so special in my life. We just keep having reasons that life pulls us back together and uh, we, we do things together. And this is another, uh, this is the second video we've done. You'll also see uh, Russell on the channel uh, in a previous video. So thank you, Russell, for this special time. And um, to the viewers, look forward to part two. There's more. And uh, I hope you've got a really powerful grip and insight on where you may have gone right, wrong, or indifferent in your attractions and your relationships playing out. But I really appreciate you, Russell. This has been a really good topic. Thanks, Freddie. You know that's absolutely mutual. And I'll look forward to seeing everyone else on the next video. Thank you. Thank you.